stuck in the rain a few times, but it was definitely worth it. Just look at this glorious view. Now, I'm on the top of a hill called Arthur's Seat that is in a park called Holyrood Park. Now, no one really knows why it's called Arthur's Seat. Some stories suggest that King Arthur and his knights lived here in their Camelot. But if you'd like to know more about King Arthur, then click on this lesson here. All I know is this is a very old volcano. There are myths that this giant rock that I'm standing on is a sleeping dragon. An old Celtic tale says that a dragon would come to life at night. It would terrorise the neighbourhoods, burning down buildings, eating the cows and the sheep in the fields. And one night he ate too much that he came here, fell asleep and could never get up again. I can't hear any breathing or any heartbeat, so I don't think that one's true. Legend has it that fairies used to roam around the bottom of this hill. If you came on the first day of May, you could see them prancing about. It became tradition for young women in the early morning on the 1st of May to come and wash their faces in the dew of the grass left by the fairies. They thought it would keep them young and beautiful. There's something so magical about Scotland. I mean, just look at all the scenery. I guess that's why their national animal is a unicorn. That's right, you heard me. But unicorns aren't real. As much as I wish they were, I'm sorry, but they aren't. In the 1300s, Scotland chose a unicorn to be their national animal because it was meant to be the sworn enemy of the lion. And the lion is the national animal of England. Scotland wanted to be more powerful and stronger than England. So it chose the unicorn so it would beat the lion any time. Throughout history, there's always been a great love of unicorns. But for the fact that they aren't actually real, there are so many different representations of what they look like. So if you picture what a unicorn may look like today, you might think of a horse-like creature that's beautiful and white, maybe purple sparkly hair with a nice shiny horn. While that's very different to what the Greeks and Romans used to think, their unicorns were huge with giant hooves on their feet. They were different colors with a very long ebony horn, kind of based on an antelope. But in the countries that didn't have antelopes, they had to think of something different. In some countries, their unicorns looked like a sheep or a goat. So going from something huge like the Greeks and Romans thought to something small and gentle like a sheep or goat. In some countries, their unicorns were actually the size of a little mouse. I can't even imagine what that one might look like. And then in other countries, they would take parts from lots of different animals. Maybe the body of a boar, the head of a pig, and the tail of a lion, or even a horse. So speaking of all these magical unicorns, it makes me want to do something a little bit arty with you guys. So if you'd like to, we can do some art. But I can't really do it right here. So I need to find myself a pen, some paper, and two friends. So let's head back to London. Okay, so we're back in London now and it took quite a while to get home so it's dark outside. But that will not stop me from doing my unicorn art. All right, so what you need to do this art is some paper, some scissors, some colored pens and two friends. The first thing you need to do with your paper, and I prepared this earlier, is you need to turn it into thirds. So fold it into three even parts and then unfold it. And to make it easier, at the top, write the different parts of the unicorn. The head, the body and the tail. Now most importantly, you need the connecting lines so that when you cut them into three different pieces, you know where the body parts are going to connect back up. Alright, 
We're going to draw our one now. Okay, the big reveal of our amazing unicorn creature is... Da -da -da -da! What would you name him or her or whatever this is? Now, we've done it quite basically with coloured pens. You could do it in any way you like. Maybe you could do collage, paint, pastels and some dye. Or maybe you could do one of each and they could have three different parts. That would look really cool. And then when you're done, you can give it to the teacher and maybe put it on some other paper and it can go on the wall. Now, I really want to see your unicorn creations. So teachers, please take photos of what your students have done. Head over to the website and on the contact page, you can see how you can send them to us. I look forward to seeing them. Have fun, guys.